Good morning. Hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. Hi. Uh, we have Hilal, Noor, Guzdan, Professor Guzdan, and Professor Özgün. Welcome to the workshop. Today is our second day. We have right now, I think, 21 participants here. Yeah. And we are live right now. Uh, yeah, let me see. Yeah, we are live on the YouTube channel. So whenever you want, professors, we can start the Okay, I have a few words just to start, by the way. Thanks for coming, first of all. Uh, I got, you know, I hope you you had a chance to follow yesterday's workshop, but still, if you missed yesterday, that's still not a big deal. I'm sure you can catch up. Uh, uh, so, I mean, if you have any questions at the beginnings, the ones like who arrived late, I think yesterday, uh, Eva and... Uh, Eva Khan uh, and uh, Xfeng Shang, actually. Do you have any questions? Hello. Hello, Eva. Hi, nice to meet you all. So uh, I, I just went through the first recording and I was uh, glad like uh, about the workshop, how it is oriented to with gamification. And my uh, curiosity was like how this uh, heritage and gamification, I mean, I'm uh, quite oriented to gamification and these immersive environments and sci-fi, cyberpunk uh, uh, backgrounds, but this uh, cultural thing like just uh, got a, uh, caught my eye, like how, how did you like went through this idea and like this is very unique and different and I wanted to explore as well. So I wanted to have your views like how did you end up with this uh, gamification of a uh, cultural uh, uh, like visualization? Okay, you know, just I have a few words and if you have any other words, of course, uh, you know, Separ and uh, Özgün, we've been, uh, Helal and Nor, of course. Uh, so, first of all, we've been using the learning environment of gamification to in order to teach uh, uh, the heritage. So, we were closely following the UN sustainable uh, goals means like the quality education uh, to reach a lot of parties through game and gamification in order to uh, let people learn from their history. That was the first idea how we started. And the previous games that we designed were through were following this, uh, more like uh, some design towards the learners. But the project that we are working on was a bit opposite. We were trying to learn from the gamers and how they can, like we can use gamification as a research method. So that's the project that we are working on. So that's how we ended up uh, a board game where the collective intelligence is the most important thing because the interaction between people is helping us uh, on a board game environment where we have no interface, where they can sit around the same table, discuss and uh, kind of, you know, have this collective intelligence. So using the gamers as agents, uh, were the, the idea of this board game that we designed. Uh, then the next step, uh, and we will be talking about that more on Friday, by the way, so you didn't miss much. So uh, then we decided to, like when we checked the game, yes, we had the game mechanics, we had a lot of abstractions, uh, but then we realized that uh, we kind of missed the first part, means that we were not really able to teach the, like, the players to learn uh, a lot about the cultural heritage, and uh, in our case, the caravansarais. So we switch back uh, to the first process. So that's kind of an iterative process where we expect two outcomes, learn from the gamers, and uh, of course, you teach the gamers the cultural heritage. Uh, so step by step, uh, you are the agents now to prepare this cultural heritage data. Uh, then like on Friday, I hope we will have a chance to finalize the game and maybe play the game together. Yes, okay. 
It's a very good question, Ella. Uh, so quite yeah. interactive. <laughs> yeah, quite interactive. That's that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, so uh, for today's schedule, I leave the ground to Sepal. Uh, but if you have no questions about the data distribution, I'm going to be more quiet today because we will have Özgün and Nur uh, as instructors. Yes, yeah, uh, thank you, Professor. Uh, actually, uh, for reviewing our program for today, uh, I can say, um, let me admit someone came. Yeah, for today's program, yeah, the second day. Actually, uh, for yesterday, um, we had an intro to the workshop on gamification in cultural heritage. So let me share my screen to show you better. Yeah. Uh, in the second hour, uh, we show the workshop flows and uh, team and then data distribution. We had a, a we created a, a Google uh, sheet and Google Drive. I put the, all the links in the Discord and I will share with you in this uh, Zoom meeting. Uh, in the fourth hour, we uh, had uh, the modeling and historic buildings. Uh, Sarvin had an introduction to the uh, how to model the historic buildings with the AutoCAD. And at the fourth hour, we had a critic and a QA session. And today, we will have uh, uh, Professor Özgün for data scraping part uh, with the Python. Uh, also, we uh, sent you a mail yesterday to download the Python and uh, the Anaconda software. In the second hour, um, Noor will uh, teach you the Agisoft Agi Metashape and photogrammetry and capturing, shooting, refer referencing, and this kind of things. And uh, after all, if we have time, me and Sarvin, we will teach you about the, we will tell you actually about the MIT's uh, platform and how to upload our models uh, to this platform. This is for uh, today's program and a short review of yesterday's program. And also I will tell you, we are right now live uh, on the YouTube, uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, in addition, uh, we have the uh, Digital Caravan Sarai, as I told you before, Digital Caravan Sarai is Google uh, Drive. Uh, we are uploading all the materials here. We have yesterday's presentations and workshops handout, and uh, actually Professor Özgün uh, uploaded the codes here. You can reach to the every materials right now from this uh, um, Google uh, platform, I mean, the Google Drive. Okay, uh, I think everything fine. If, if anyone has any question, please ask. Else we can start with Professor Özgün. Uh, actually, I have a quick question. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, um, as far as I understand, we have to create 3D modeling using any 3D modeling software. Um, yet you, you keep uh, mentioning the photogrammetry. And from my experience, I have already created uh, 3D modeling using photogrammetry. Um, yet I did not use a, a Gisoft. I have used, uh, in, in my master thesis, I have used um, capture reality or reality capture. Uh, so what's the point to have a 3D modeling and to create uh, photogrammetry? Yeah, Thank that's you. a good question. I, I can answer that. So. Uh, so the, the reconstruction drawings to, or the reconstruction models will be more about our interpretation because uh, more about your, uh, I mean, our, I would say, uh, assumptions about the 3D building. But the photogrammetry will be presenting the reality that it is in. Uh, 
as it's a game, we are going to have different levels of overlapping the two information together so that we can differentiate, you know, the information in between. That's the first reason. The second reason, well, that's a very good question, by the way. Uh, the second reason uh, is that, of course, uh, we are trying to create a system and actually the design heritage system at MIT is uh, the same thing, is a crowdsourcing system. So anyone can upload their data, means that wherever you are from, you can have the same system means in this case, the, it allows only photogrammetric data because of some technical limits uh, that you can upload your own data wherever you, you are from. Uh, so that's, you know, so that we can have overall as a worldwide, uh, you know, 3D modeling system, uh, almost like the digital metaverse of the heritage that we have uh, on Earth. That's the second reason. And the third one, you don't have to use, we are not usually not specific to any program especially for 3D modeling, you know, like because there was no point of teaching you, you already know the 3D modeling. But if you are, you want to work on reality capture, uh, you are free to work. The reason we are using PhotoScan is that uh, our instructor Noor is quite experienced in that. And we have a license, you know, but reality capture needs to be, you know, have some credits each time you export, you know, and we are so happy if you share your results, whether there will be, you know, some di different kind of uh, accuracy problems, you know, because, uh, you know, you know that like in photogrammetry, there's always a challenge to compare the software performances. So we are more, so happy if you share the results or if you compare the results and share with us. Uh, do you mean uh, if I already have a time to use um, my building uh, for this workshop in Agisoft and Reality Capture, right? Yeah, yes, 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 yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. Yeah, okay. Okay. And like maybe we will learn some more from Noor today because as you know, the, as we start the workshop with Özgün, we will be scraping data. It's not an ideal case where we just like, we go there and take the photographs or videos in order to 3D, to make the 3D. Uh, rather what we have been doing, we, we are all frame, away from the caravanserized and we've been trying to, you know, retrieve information uh, from the internet. So these are all unstructured data. So that's going to be, so we are going to use the markers in order to, to align the photographs, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Any, any more questions? Very amazing questions. I love it. Anyway. Yes, Özgün, the ground is yours. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, so you were uh instructed to download uh anaconda i hope it's you could do it and it runs uh correctly in your machine so today i'm going to demonstrate how to uh, scrape some image data uh from web specifically i will show from google images but this can apply this can work in any kind of web uh like image search uh website uh, it works in uh, Bing images, or it can work in any uh, website if you know the HTML structure of the website. So, okay, I'm going to share my screen and we will go step by step. Uh, okay. Okay, I think it works. Yeah. Okay, I will first uh, start Anaconda. So, I hope everyone installed Anaconda and it runs in your machine. So Anaconda, uh, to, to give you a little bit brief information about Anaconda, it's a, a virtual environment uh, to uh, run certain uh, programming languages, specifically uh, Python and R. Uh, I'm not sure if you have any experience in programming languages, but at least for this workshop, I'm the, the code is ready. You just need to change the keyword uh, just for, for it to run and download whatever image you are looking for from uh, Google Images. But if you know more about Python, you can even 
uh, manipulate the code, change it, and uh, adapt it according to your need. You can even use this, like not in this workshop, but like in your uh, professional life or academic life to download some images when you need uh, some images. Okay. Anyway, so this is Anaconda when it uh, opens up. So first I will show you how to create an environment. So here on the left-hand side, you can see environments. So I already have some, uh, some environments that I created. Uh, I have another uh, workshop in Digital Futures. I also have a Digital Futures environment. So yes, uh, but if it's the first time you are opening uh, Anaconda, uh, you will probably have just this uh, base root. Uh, so I will show you how to create a new uh, environment. To create a new era environment, there is this uh, create button at the low uh, left hand side. And when you, if you did this before, uh, it's okay. You can use a, a previous uh, environment. But if you are new, uh, I I would suggest not to use the base. In, uh, installation, but give it a meaningful name. Uh, so I will say digital futures of 2022. Uh, and this asks for packages. So I said uh, it works for Python and it works for R, but uh, we don't need R right now. And for Python, there are several uh, versions. Uh, I will select the default one, which is 3.8.13. Uh, uh, the only requirement is uh, two, uh, the version 2 is quite old, so I will not or you shouldn't uh, install it. Uh, otherwise, I think this, this can work uh, well. And I'm going to create it. And it shows you where uh, it's creating the environment for your uh, reference. OK, I will. Click create and it will take some time to download Python. Hopefully it's not very long, like one or two minutes. I will wait and meanwhile you can do this. Oh, okay, it's uh, quicker than I thought, uh, it's done. Okay, so uh, if you are using an old uh, environment, you can also select it from here. So you can, you can select and it switches uh, to whatever environment you, you choose. I will go back to this one. So when you uh, create a new environment, it comes up with some pre-installed uh, libraries uh, for Python. Today we are going to use some libraries. I'm going to demonstrate how to add uh, libraries when you need uh, something. Okay, so here in this tab, you can see the installed libraries. These are your uh, installed libraries. And if you change this, you can see not installed libraries, or you can list all of them. And if there is a tick, uh, let me find one. It's a huge list. Okay, here. So it, it shows what libraries are uh, installed and which ones are not installed. Okay, so I I uh, put a code in drive. Can you download that? It's uh, here, image search dot uh, IPYNB. This file, it's a, uh, like a short, uh, small uh, Python file. Okay, so now I have this. So I will show you how to open up a, not, uh, a notebook. Uh, Jupyter Notebook. Jupyter Notebook is an uh, interactive notebook environment where you can run Python code. Uh, so it's it's an easy uh, easy interface. You can see your code while running. Uh, so it's it's quite uh, useful and it's frequently used by uh, especially by the people in the field of machine learning or data science because you can you can see on the, uh, on the spot your the results of your code. So if it's the first time you're opening up your environment, uh, this is not installed. So you need to click install. 
and it will take it's, uh, quite short, so it shouldn't take uh, much time. So it will install this uh, capability, and we will use this for the uh, for today. Meanwhile, sorry, professor, uh, we have a question here in the chat bar. Oh, okay. Uh, Mudra asked, I'm unable to create an environment. Uh, so what's, uh, what's the error, if there's an error or um, what's happening? I mean, I'm trying to click on the create button, but there's no window popping up somehow. Uh, maybe you need to re, uh, like op uh, close it and then uh, open up again. Maybe sometimes it just disappears. Can try that. If you cannot create uh, a new environment for whatever weird reason, you can also use the base environment, but that will install it yeah. uh, in the in the base. Yes. Uh, it's uh, it's right. probably I I I think it's uh, you can check the. Yes, so uh, that is the issue. I'm not even able to see the base route. There are no environments available. Oh, okay. That's 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 weird. Yeah. And there is no error or anything. No, nothing. Not showing anything. Okay. Uh, okay. So I don't know what's happening. Maybe you can uh, try. reboot your try computer or try, try reinstalling. Yes. 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 Okay. So I'm back at Digital Futures, uh, the newly created environment, and it should be installed. Yes, it's, it's installed. And I will click Launch. So it will launch in a browser. So this is, this is, the, uh, this is the interface. So it shows your uh, like hard drive. It actually, if you are using Windows, it opens up exactly at the at this location. If you didn't change it, uh, so uh, where is my bar? It's here. So it's in uh, C drive and users and your name. Uh, so here, uh, so you see this 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 part, and you can create a new folder here from this uh, from this interface. Uh, I already created one uh, called digital. Uh, you can also name it as digital or whatever you want. And I will go inside. And from here, you will you can click. Uh, okay, I, I will go back. I will show how to create a new folder. Uh, I already did it, but I, for the sake uh, for the sake of showing, so you can uh, create a new folder. Unfortunately, it just doesn't give a name, so you will select it. And here from rename, you can give it a name. You can say whatever you want and rename it. Uh, but I already did one folder, so I will go inside this one. So this is the, this is the uh, file that I shared. So please uh, move or, or copy this file into the folder that we are working. Uh, for my case, it's digital. And if you move it, you can click click on it and it will run it in a new uh, tab in your browser. So I will wait for for a minute for you to copy the file, open up in a, in a tab. And then we I can... Uh, I can uh, describe what's going on in the code. And if you have any errors, you can you can ask. Meanwhile. Okay, so if everyone could uh, copy the file and open up in a Jupyter Notebook uh, page. So first, 
first thing first, we need to install certain libraries. If this is the first time you are opening up an environment, you will be missing some of these libraries. So I will demonstrate how to install a new library uh, from uh, Anaconda. So we go back to Anaconda window. So we go to our environment tab. And then here, from here, uh, you can select all or not installed. And actually it's better to use all so that if you installed it, you don't need to search it again. And so from the code, uh, we need to install Selenium first. And then there is a Python image library, PIL. Uh, we need to install this. These uh, request IO time uh, operating system hash library. These are already uh, in the base uh, Python installation. So we don't need to deal with it, but we need to install Selenium and we need to install uh, PIL. So for Selenium, you type Selenium and it shows you the selection and I will select the bottom one, just the Selenium and you click apply to install. It will check what packages to be installed. It will come up with a lot of different uh, libraries that, is, uh, that uh, this library is dependent on. So you just click apply. And the second library is below. It's uh, here. And this should be a small package, but with a lot of dependencies anyway. So we will install this as well. Okay, now we are done. Uh, we are done with the libraries, but we also need one more step to make this work. So to test this, what you can do is uh, you can uh, cut these two lines uh, and click run and see if there is an error. So yes. So I need to install this one as well, request. So I go back to here. I'll select request and apply. So this changes uh, according to your installation. Sometimes it, some of these uh, libraries comes uh, with the base Python, sometimes it does not. So you might need to install some other libraries as well, but uh, let me check now after installing requests. Okay, so it doesn't give me an error, so it's fine. So we need to install, for my case, I don't know if it will be the same for uh, you as well. We need to install uh, pillow, requests, and Selenium. I repaste uh, the, this code as well. Okay, now, uh, so I have one more step to do. So how this code works, it opens up a virtual browser and it goes to a site that you give link to, like for this case, it's Google images and it downloads all the images uh, that you queried for. So we need a virtual, uh, virtual uh, browser. So for this case, uh, there is, okay, it's, I saved it here. I will be using Chrome driver uh, from Selenium. So to download this, uh, you need to go to Chrome driver, uh, dot chromium org uh, downloads. But this can, uh, so this is for Windows. If you are using macOS, then uh, you need to download this from this link. So I will put these uh, two to chat.
and this is the description to install it in the for macOS. But to make it, it's a it's a uh, it's a short. Uh, it's a small uh, file, like eleven megabytes. I will put it into Drive uh, for for those who use. Um, for those who use Windows, but if you use uh, macOS, uh, then you need to uh, download it through the through the link. Okay. So, Mimal, if you have any questions, you can ask. You know, I think we shared only the digital futures with a digital futures folder with them. Could you place it there? No, this this was uh, shared uh, because they right, uh, Sepa. No, no, not digital caravansarai. We shared the digital futures with them. So, is this a wrong folder, Sepa? No, no. Like, click to digital futures. That's at the center. Oh, yes. okay. Sorry. Sorry, yeah. Now, uh, is it available? Let me check the job. Yeah, it's available. Okay, so you can uh, put that file in the folder that you created as well. So you need uh, image search and Chrome driver uh, in, a, in a folder. So let me go back to the notebook. Okay, something failed. I will reopen it from here. Okay, I go to digital folder and I will open this image search. Okay, I will wait for a couple of minutes for you to finish up with the downloading this uh, small file. Meanwhile, if you have any questions, you can ask. Uh, I will describe a little bit uh, of the code, like how it works while you are uh downloading the uh driver so here we import the libraries and we create a path to access the digital uh to access virtual uh, browser which is for my case chrome driver dot exe file and we uh define this as a path uh for the the for the python file uh, to work and we have three functions here. Uh, the first one searches and downloads, down, downloads the uh, files. And the second one is to uh, save the images. And the third one is to fetch the image URLs, the links to images uh, from the web page. Uh, so these are all Python functions. I am not sure if you have any uh, experience in uh, Python, but it's it's like it's just like mathematical functions. You just need to call them, and it does whatever uh, job it needs to do. So we need to run these to make it available for the Python uh, code. So I will run. Sorry, I need to run this first. Don't forget to run everything. So when I run this. Okay, there are too many windows everywhere. Anyway, so I, when I run this, I have a Chrome, like the virtual uh, browser. So you can see that this is virtual because it says Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. So this, this window is the window that you will use to access Google images and you will 
uh, download images from that uh, website. So, okay, after I work this, I will, I will run this and this and this. So now my code is ready. So what you need to change is how you don't need to change any of these things if you don't know how Python works or anything. So it's like a ready-made program. So you need to just uh, change here the search, search term to whatever uh, search you will do. So first I will demonstrate how Google Images works if you are not familiar. So you can go to Google Images and let's uh, search cat, like a classic image search. Okay, this uh, you can search uh, cat and like the way it works you can scroll down up to a certain number of results and then when there is more uh, you it gives you this is uh, in turkish by the way but uh, in all languages there is like a more button and you can click more and it shows more until there is no more uh, images so you can of course uh, you can uh, search uh, more uh, specific search, like, I don't know, Angora cat, to find a more specific version of something. So, and the way the code works, uh, it searches a keyword and it uh, lists some of the, these images. And then the program one by one clicks this, and then there's this big version opens up and saves this into your hard drive. And it does this uh, re recursively until there is no more images. So it, it scans all these uh, images and it uh, finds out the link to these images. And then in the second, uh, so like the first stage, it finds the links. And in the second uh, stage, it downloads. And it also gives you a message about the progress. So if there is no error, so if this works for everyone, uh, if you if there are if there are any errors, you can you can ask me now. If not, uh, we can all uh, try to do a search to demonstrate this. So for example, like I did, I will put Angora cat, and I will run. And now my search is here. So to, to run the search, I need to run this final part. So this calls the search and download function, which was uh, here at the top. So this is all connected to that function. And this function calls for the other two functions. So they are all connected to each other. Anyway, so let's run this and see how it works. Okay, uh, okay. So this is important. So sometimes uh, like whatever uh, website you are accessing, it asks you to click something. And if that happens, you will get an error. So what you need to do is you need to uh, click and accept and see if there is, let's see there is uh, no result. So I will wait for it to give the error and I will rerun. Uh, but this only happens like uh, when you first open up so it will die down now and it will give an error. So I will rerun this. Okay, now you can see the progress. It's just, I don't, I'm not touching anything. It just goes and finds these images and uh, it uh, remembers the name, uh, uh, like the place of the link. And we will see the progress from here uh, in a minute. Okay, uh, while waiting this, if you have any questions, you can ask now. Yeah, any questions from the participants? Yes, could, could, could you please uh, show the, the way to this file with the code? I, I couldn't, I couldn't hear. Could you please uh, show again uh, how do you open the file with the code itself? Oh, uh, what? Like the... The, the, the file you're looking now, uh, could you show again how do you open it? Oh, okay, 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 I understand. Because all this launching and downloading was very distracting. To be honest, okay, I was okay, 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 okay. 
Okay, uh, I understand. Okay, I will first see the result. I will show the results. Uh, so this is done. So you can see that after finding the links, it gave me this, I found this much uh, links. And then it said, this is done. And like, you can see the success uh, here for all, for the all images. And sometimes there are errors, it can always happen. And I will show you where it uh, saves. Uh, so here in the images folder, uh, it creates a folder with your uh, with your search term. So for for this instance, it's Angora Cat. So it creates a folder and puts the files here, like like this. So. You can see all the Angora cats that we downloaded uh, from, from, from this program. Okay, going back to your question. Uh, so I will re-show like how I accessed that. So first, like I will, uh, so I opened up Anaconda. I created an environment. I uh, installed uh the required libraries after i installed the required libraries uh, i came to this interface the home and here uh, if it's the first time i click install for, for jupyter no notebook and it installed jupyter notebook and i launched that so when i launched that it shows this uh, folder from my C hard drive. It's C users, your name, which for me is Uzgun. And here you can see the folders and we created a new folder here from, the, from this tab from new uh, and selecting folder and it creates an untitled folder. I click on the tick and rename it. I, this time I will say digital tree. Uh, so it's here as an empty uh, folder. And I put my file, uh, image search file, and also Chrome driver file to this folder. For my case, I'm going back, back to my folder, which is digital. And you can see here Chrome driver and image search. And if you click on this, it will open up in a new tab. So you can start uh using it is is that uh what you're asking yes thank you. okay uh, any other questions yeah we have some questions in the chat bar okay uh, yursa asked i can't find seleni or peel in my environment uh okay so that might be because uh, so I so if here if uh, here installed is selected and if you try to search for pillow now I can see it but I won't see it if it's uninstalled so for for this case you need to select either all or not installed if you select all you can see any like if it's uninstalled or installed you can see it here so it might that might be the reason so if you select this okay. as an all and then search you might see the you might see below okay thank you okay okay and another question i uh hajar asked i have tried multiple times to install anaconda yet the installation did not complete it always stops near the end saying setting up the base environment. Also, she said, no, that's the question, I think. Okay. Uh, so that I, I, I cannot help uh, without uh, knowing what's the reason, but it, I don't know if it's a Windows computer or a Mac OS computer. Uh, so what can be like, you, you can try in another computer or uh, what, what else? Uh, well, I, I, I can't help without, <laughs> without uh, seeing what's the error or anything. Okay. 
uh, so they can ask another question now about uh, so we created the folder uh, and afterwards where do you get those files which you place to this folder because you have them but you don't have them oh so it's, it's in it's in drive no uh, i couldn't find them on drive the only only chrome chrome and image search Okay, send the cookie. I'll send the link here again. Oh yes, thank you. Thank you. It's oh. only two two files: it's uh, okay. image yeah. search and uh, Chrome driver. Okay, now I get it. Thank you. Okay. Any okay. other question? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Oki or Osi, ask a little bit slower, please. <laughs> oh, okay. Sorry uh and move uh, yeah if if any specific question i can repeat that part yeah and uh mutra asked uh, uh no actually uh, uh actually i figured it out the anaconda anaconda three wasn't working so i installed two and it is working now so okay yes i'll share that link if anybody wants to try it okay yes okay great thank you Yes. So, uh, Sena or Mustafa, do you have any questions regarding the pictures you uploaded to the Zoom? Uh, yes, uh, for me, um, I'm having an error when trying to search with uh, the keyword related to Dan, uh, So, uh, yes. So the um, the error is the, the screenshot. Also, uh, I can see my screen. Professor Özgün, can you see the screenshots, or maybe Mustafa can share his screen? Yeah, you can share your screen. I can uh, stop my sharing. Okay. Okay. I think uh, the screen sharing is locked by the host. Okay. Uh, let me check. Yeah, try it again. Yeah, you can write it. It is. Oh, uh, you probably didn't run one of the one of the uh, code uh, windows, so you need to run all of it like one by one from like Great. from the start. You go up so, from the start. You need to run all these codes. And there, there is an error. So you didn't install uh, Selenium. You need to uh, go back to Anaconda and from the libraries, you need to install Selenium. I think I installed it. No, it's not in the install tab. So you probably didn't. Oh, okay. Don't know. Okay, that's strange because it doesn't show in the install tab, but uh, it looks installed. So maybe you can uh, close this window, like the Anaconda, and reopen again. Maybe it, it was stuck in some some place. This is still the base base uh, environment. Maybe you should go to the digital features. Yes. Okay, here it it looks installed. Uh, try it again from the from the Jupyter notebook. No, no, you need to launch it again because you, you turned off. So you need to click launch from the Anaconda. Uh, 
from here. Yes. Right. Yes. Okay, try now. Okay, now it works. Uh, now run all, all, oh, what's, what's this? Okay, there is some error about the, about, about the Chrome file. And I'm not sure what what happened there. You you can you can you retry again? Uh, the the first the first one. Like the most yeah this this one can you? From driver here. Yeah, there's there's some there's something wrong here. I don't know what's happening here. Sena also says uh, she has the same error. Uh, yeah oh Same. it's yeah it's it's probably it's because the folder has some spaces uh uh like you need the folder i mean to be uh to be safe uh if you're working with python code always uh use uh folders without any spaces or any like uh, uh any weird characters just can you put it in a folder just say digital or some something short and without any spaces so, okay, so I can maybe I can try it and uh, I go it back to you. Okay, not okay. To, uh, take too much time. Yeah, okay. sure. You can. Yeah, uh, for for everyone, please. Uh, if you yeah, don't don't use any folder with with any spaces or any Turkish characters or any anything like that. Okay. Any other? Uh, any other error? Any other questions, guys? Any other question, any other comment? So I will, uh, this is what I wanted to show, but I will just, not to complicate things, I don't want to complicate things, but I will just show what to change if you want to use uh, another, uh, another image search site. So you can see uh, just below this code, I will also give you, uh, the second version, which I used uh, Bing uh, so images. You are not sharing your screen. Oh, okay, sorry. And uh, we have some questions. Uh, they will ask after your, after you or now. Uh, I will. I will briefly mention what I'm saying. It's just short, and I can take the questions okay. after that. So, so as I described, uh, so what it like. Quickly, I will show you what it, uh, uh, how it works. So here there is a search URL and this uh, search is made through this Google, uh, Google link. And you can see a queue uh, in uh, parentheses here. So whatever you put here, it goes inside that queue. So if you put Angora cat, it replaces Q with Angora cat and the, the, the Q here and it searches. So this is exactly the same as uh, if I put this in my browser and I replace this Q as, uh, uh, I don't want to put any spaces, so I will just put cat. So this is exactly the same as searching cat from Google images. So that's, that's how it works. So you just, uh, find how to uh, search uh, from Google images and you replace, you put it in the code. So what we will do if like you can change, uh, you can put any, you can use any other image search site. So like, let's try Bing images. So you can see, like if I make a query here, like same, uh, cat, so you can see how this works. So you can see Q equals cat here and Q P, the, uh, actually it's P Q uh, cat here. So like if I take this 
And if I go here and if I replace this, uh, actually it's here, but I will show it from scratch. If I put this here and I will make this a search URL equals in this marks. And I will just put parentheses cat here. Uh, I will delete cat and I will put Q so that it takes the uh, query from the end of the code. And I will replace this cat as well. And I will make this Q. So, and after this, you need to also change uh, how it accesses the images. If you know a little bit about HTML, if you don't know anything about HTML or what I'm doing, if it's too complicated, you don't need to change anything, just use as it is uh, for Google images. But if you want to be a little bit adventurous, I, uh, I actually create like put the alternative uh, queries here with the, uh, with the command. So th this is command for uh, Python. So if it's, uh, if, if it's in uh, green, the code doesn't read it. And if you delete this and make this with a uh, uh, hash symbol, then now this is commented and this is used. So you can use it alternatively. So just remember, if you're using the BIM ver Bing version, you need to uncomment all of these uh, with the Bing uh comment so this is just a side information if you are you want to be a, a, bit, a little bit adventurous you can try bing but if not just use it as it is if you don't want to uh like screw up any of the code just uh use it as it is for for google images Okay, this is all I wanted to show for today. So you can use this uh, to find images from the web. You can even like use other, uh, other web sources if you know what you are doing. And you can, you can ask uh, us, uh, you can reach us if you have a specific uh, website with images and you wanted to experiment it with this, I will gladly help you modify this code uh, specific to the web page that you are using. So this is all I want to, uh, to show today and I can take the questions. Okay, thank you, Professor. Uh... So, any questions? Uh, because chat is a little complicated to read right now. If you can, we can quiz, ask your question. Unmute yourself and ask your question, please. Um, I, I have a question. I have a really quick question. Okay, go on. I actually, I, I did lose concentration um, uh, uh, when Professor is, is uh, mentioned the Chrome driver part. I did not actually understand what is the point. There is, there is some... Uh... I mean, what does this has to do uh, with a board game and within the process yeah 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 i sure. i lost you but i don't know if that that's uh, if i'm having the problem uh, i can write the question down uh, to the chat box yeah i i, I heard the question heard the internet connection is poor it. so i'm not sure if i can hear it <laughs> try to I was gonna. I heard that I can answer this question. Okay. Okay. So for, first of all, like stay with us. If you still miss this part, no problem. We already collected the information from the internet for you, so no worries. It was an extra. So what we are trying to do is that, like, we are trying to like set a system where you can automatically download the images that are related to your caravan that is assigned to you. 
So we are just, you know, like instead of going manually one by one to go all the images that you can collect from the internet, let's say, what's your caravansaray, Hajar? Suzuk. Ah, su Susus, right? Suzus, yes, yeah. Yeah, Susus, yes, yes, okay. Uh, yeah. No worries, it's just Turkish pronunciation is slightly different. Okay, uh, so we, uh, so you will be like through this, instead of going to, to all the websites, Özgün is showing how to download all the images that belongs to Susus. But for the rest of the workshop, we already downloaded for all of you, you know, the images and we try to select the best, uh, you know, images so that you can keep on with the photogrammetry. So this is a way to use the internet uh, search uh, and find the images. And sometimes you can adjust, the, uh, you know, like whatever resolution that you want. And uh, so use the keywords instead of a cat, a caravansaray, uh, and download from the internet. Green, so thank I'm, you so much. Okay. Green, thank you. So but we much. have the folders with you, or uh, like for you, no worries for that. Okay. Uh, can I say uh, something to Hajar? Yes, Noor, go ahead. Uh, Hajar, we are not able to to pictures of the caravansarays, so we are gonna build a three D model by using the collected photos. That's why Özgün Hoca showed that, Professor Özgün showed that. This is the quick answer. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. Yeah. And the keywords will change each time for each, you know, caravansaray, uh, actually. Like some of the caravansarays, like susuz is not a bad one. Uh, susuz means no water in Turkey. So if you end up, you know, uh, like seeing something without water or with a glass of water, that's totally fine, uh, you know. Uh, or some of the caravansarays might refer to, you know, some other things. Uh, we try to choose yeah, the ones that are easier. Like Akhan might be means white caravansaray, you know, like these kind of stuff. Uh, There's but a probably a famous movie in India about Akhan. So whenever I search Akhan, there is an Indian movie star appearing as a, in a poster, for example. Yeah, 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 yeah. So uh, that's the stage. But I still want to ask to everyone, is there anyone who was able to download whatever images that you wanted to download from the Internet? Uh, can I say something? Yes, sure. Yeah, yeah. I was able to run the code and I was able to download the Khan because it was already written there. But once I wrote down the name for my uh, Karwan Sarai, I need uh, it kind of is still empty, uh, the folder itself, and it's showing me uh, a Chrome window, which is blank. Okay, this is a good question. Sometimes it can it can stuck for whatever reason. So, uh, so the first sometimes it happens to ask you this this accept the the cookie uh, thing, and if you don't click, and it just dies down and it stays like that for some time. So if that kind of thing happens, just rerun the code. Wait for uh, the so when it's running. So when I run this, for example, mm -hmm. it shows. Okay, so I I need to rerun everything because I can I just close that. Anyway, so let's do this. Okay, when it's working, when it's doing its job, see if if this happens, it uh, screws up with the search and it got stuck. You can see this. So you just like close this. This is by the way, it's Bing. I changed it to Bing, but it works for every like uh, for for Google Images as well. So if this happens, just uh, close the Chrome window and rerun the code. So it's probably getting and, stuck somewhere. And I just refresh this local this notebook basically to rerun it. Uh, no, no, no. You don't need to refresh, but you just uh, close the uh, the Chrome. Uh, okay, okay, okay. And okay. then you need to rerun just this, not not the whole page, but this. But okay, you need to wait for this. So if it's showing an asterisk mark, it means it's stuck. 
so you cannot rerun it so you need to wait for it mm -hmm. to uh, be empty or with a number so it's if it's like this you can rerun uh, you can run but okay. if there is an asterisk you cannot do anything you need to wait for it to uh to die down if that doesn't happen there is here in the kernel there is restart if you click this it will it's like just it's like rebooting your computer so it reboots all this instance so you can re uh, run the code from the beginning to till the end if if uh, oh. nothing else clears it you need to do this okay thank you Yusra has shared the screen, actually a screenshot with you, Özgün. Uh, how do you see it from? It's on the chat box. Oh, okay. It's hard to find when you are sharing the screen, <laughs> but. Yeah. Okay, let me uh, stop my share. Yeah, you can. <laughs> okay, it downloaded to somewhere, so I need to find where it downloaded now. Ah, okay, it says click open. Okay. Oh, this is the, the yeah, this is the blank uh, stage. Uh, if this it, it if it hangs like hangs up like this, then just uh, uh, close the window and then rerun it. Perfect, I understand, thank you. Sena is getting the same error. Not the uh, same error. <laughs> Can I share my screen? Yes. Not sure. Okay. That one. Okay, this, uh, can you show me the name of the folder? It's probably the same uh, thing. No, this looks fine. Uh, also, I've been trying since um, uh, we were discussing the, this issue. I found some uh, uh, versions of releases of Chrome driver, uh, so I'm trying to uh, to identify which uh, version of Chrome I'm using and downloading the uh, appropriate version. Yeah, uh, that can be that can be a solution. Also, you can try with a different browser. So if Chrome is not working, so let me uh, share screen as well. Okay. Uh, so okay, that can be a remedy so i showed you this this it was actually here so this was the chrome driver uh, you can search for selenium uh, browser drivers and then you can go to the here uh, not this one but the second one you can see different browsers so this was chrome but you can try firefox or Edge or Internet Explorer, uh, you can uh, try finding uh, Firefox, Selenium, Fiverr. It's here. Uh, where is it? Okay, it's here for Windows. I think it's this one. So I can put this in the gra uh, Google Drive as well. Okay, it's this Gecko driver. But if you are going to use this, you need to change the file name uh, from here like this chrome driver.exe should change as gecko driver so i'm going to put this into the folder is it here uh, it's, i need to just
Okay, it's there. So try with Gecko driver. Okay. Any other question? Uh, Yoki, who? Uh, do you have any question? Um, yeah, I, I'm still, I still don't. Uh, okay, sorry. Am I cross talking somebody? Uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, First, you can call here. Yeah, you can ask. Uh, I use spider to write and uh, as I click it, it gives me a message and then it opens and closed. And uh, I, I, can I see the, yes, here. I try to use it. I think problem there. Oh, yeah, disabling the info bar. Uh, so there is, so it gives an error from the find element. So there, there should be something in the bottom that uh, is not working from the code. Uh, can you go towards uh, the bottom part? Scroll down. Uh, so slow, slowly, sorry. Uh, somewhere a little bit uh, upwards. Yeah, somewhere around here. So it's, uh, okay. So are you searching uh, from Bing or are you searching from uh, Google Images? Uh, I tried to use version from Google and it has the same problem. So I tried Bing and it's still the same. So there's some error with the selector, uh, which I cannot read from here. Uh, but uh, did, did the Google version work? Like the, the previous version, like the, uh, the original file, did it work? Yes, um, I think so. I, I, I can't hear. Yeah, yes, could you repeat the question? Did, did the initial, the, the, the first stage with, uh, with Google Images, did it work without changing to Bing? Uh, uh, I haven't heard it. Sorry, I don't know. Uh, can you uh, retake the file from uh from google, google drive and try try that one yeah. that should uh, that should work i hope i'm not running over my time uh Separ, should yeah. i <laughs> should we wrap soon yeah i think uh we can uh, answer the last question hajar and after that okay uh if you have any questions also you can ask me yeah. uh through discord or uh through mail uh, you can share my mail and i can i can answer so let let me check the code so can you go down a little bit uh, a little bit more Oh, this is this is not the original version so probably like separate is the share uh, open to edit someone probably works uh, from the file and change the file uh, let me check 
Okay, I will put the original, like uh, the first version with the Google uh, search, if that happened. Yeah. Maybe we can maybe we can email uh, the file so that everyone has it on their own computer. Yeah, sure. We can email okay. after the workshop. Okay, I can I can do this after uh, I'm done. So I, I will share uh, the initial code, and if you don't change it, it should it should work with Google Images. Okay. Okay. And the last question from Hajar. Would you please ask your question briefly? Uh, actually, I was still having a problem finding um, Selenium and Pillow uh, in Anaconda environment. Uh, somebody, Sadaf told me that I have to uh, click on update index and search again. I tried that, did not work. Okay, I will, so, I will uh, show uh, very quickly the last time. So... Okay, I go here from Anaconda, I uh, selected the environment here. Uh, so probably for you, it's selected as installed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you select install, then if it's uninstalled, you won't see it. So please uh, select this as all. And then if you search pillow, now you can find it and you can find Selenium for me. Oh, so, yeah. Mm. Okay. Okay, this answers your question, right? Yes, thank you so much. You're welcome. So I think we can wrap up, uh, Sefer. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Professor Özgün, for your uh, perfect presentation and the uh, Anaconda. Uh, I think we can, we can have a 15 minutes break. Uh, what's your idea, Professor Giza? I um, before the break, maybe we can, I can, uh, because I've been having some personal messages as yeah. well. Uh, you know direct messages so uh first of all as said we already prepared the you know the data sets for you i mean if you're not still you know uh, learn the system you uh, you know you can use the code later tonight but i want to show a few things i share screen so uh as you know we distributed you know the you can see my screen right yes okay so you already have your uh, folders ready like we did some search through several different methods so you can see it under the folder photo uh, the images that are that Özgün Hoca us and everyone collected from the internet so if you scroll down to your folder you already have these uh, as you know we all we gave you some of these uh, caravan sarays that you can see like team one akam team 13 Kızılören, you know like you can find your list so the ones that are a bit with this yellowish color these are the late comers so we already assigned them some caravan sarays here uh, so please tell let us know because after today we cannot really change your groups or your caravan sarays so you will be working about these buildings that's the first thing and also we have one more method that Onur uh, Hoca will show you so that's under this folder not only you have the data under your folder but also whenever you go to this matrix uh, you are gonna see that all caravansarites have some YouTube images so except from the photographs some videos that you, you we already found online are uh, already there so you can click there you can go to that youtube and you will have much more photographs uh, i mean i mean you you're gonna have the videos and through some screenshots that nur uh, will show you you can always find some uh, more images uh, of from the internet okay so in short there are two ways of you know finding the images for these caravansarais that we already collected for you is that these YouTube links, sometimes YouTube, sometimes Facebook, sometimes, you know, some random, you know, TV video, like for example, a newspaper, uh, you know, documented some things about these caravansarais. So the visual column, like the C column refers to, uh, refers to the videos, 
and you can always go to your folder, let's say Akan, and click on photo. We already uploaded, you know, some of the photographs. Some caravansarais might have a shortcut. I, I hope you can reach that. So these are our own field studies. Uh, so you can always have some videos and photographs. Not all caravansarais has that uh because uh we haven't been to all of these caravansarais so these are the three sets of data in short that you will be dealing with with the rest of the uh, with the rest of the workshop uh so first one is our images that we collected through the internet using özgün hocas özgün's method uh second uh you know the videos that we found on the internet uh and the third some caravansarais uh have our own data that we collected during this uh the field surveys that we did last summer so the challenge just a reminder is that uh we are sitting here you know different parts of the world but we are using the already collected images in order to make the photogrammetry so that's the challenge of the of today's workshop any questions Yes. Tarvin Separ, Özgün. Özgün, you are on Discord, right? If you are curious to collect more photographs, not only about the caravansaray, but about the cats, they can ask you, right? Yes. Of course, you can always ask. Uh, if you want to, if you find a really interesting uh, website with, I don't know, with a lot of uh, caravansaray images, uh, you, we can check and try to modify the part that you search for images and we can run it for your uh, whatever your specific cases. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, professors. So we may have a 10 minutes break. Yeah, and after let's that, no break. Let's say 13, 40, eight, for me it's 840. I don't know, like 13 minutes, Noor? Does it is it okay? So Noor will continue. Okay. Uh, if you haven't downloaded uh, the uh, MetaShape or any other photogrammetry software, please do so. Yeah. Uh, I'll send check. you the installation link. So yeah. yeah, exactly. And I will share again in the chat. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Özgün and Professor Gizden. We will see you in 30 minutes.
So the time's up. Yeah, we can start actually continue the workshop. And let me close the timer. Okay. So uh, <clears throat> right now we will continue with uh, Noor Erdemci, master student, uh, master of history and architecture at Istanbul Technical University. Today, uh, she will talk about the photogrammetry and she shared with you the link of the Metashape, uh, Agisoft Metashape software. We are so happy to have her for today's workshop. Thank you so far. Hello, everyone. My pleasure. Uh, your, your voice is not really good. Really? Can you? Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, you have some noises. Move. Yeah, I have some noises. <clears throat> I think it's about my PC, but I don't know. Is it so bad? A little bit. <laughs> yeah, kind of. What can we do? <laughs> Is it okay now? Um, can you talk again? Is it okay now? <laughs> Uh, there. Uh, it's better, yeah. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Maybe you can start. Yeah. Yeah, just let me know when it's going to be done. Sure. So I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to keep my camera off because of my internet connection. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah, perfect. Okay, uh, let me introduce myself again. I am an art historian actually, and I am a master's student at Istanbul Technical University. It's a great place. And, um, before I joined this project, I worked for six years in archeological surveys. And apart from digital heritage, I'm actually working on Byzantine religious buildings and churches. And my master thesis is about the fifth century church. Uh, sorry, Noor, uh, your voice is really unstable, I think. Really? Yeah. yeah. Can you try another uh, mic or? Uh, maybe, maybe headphones, AirPods, or. Let AirPods. me change my headphones. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Give me a sec, please. Okay, no problem. Take your time. So, Sarvan Sepa, maybe we can share her slides. Uh, yeah, sure, but I think there is a problem with Mike. Which... Yeah. A mic only, okay. Okay, is it better? Yeah, yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's really better. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, now I can't hear you. That's the problem. Hmm, totally? She can't hear us. <laughs> Just let me do something else. Okay. So while waiting, do you have any questions so far, by the way? Is it okay now, my voice? Yeah. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> Some questions? Uh, Noor, I think your voice is the same. Yeah, it's not stable. Yeah, again. Maybe uh, you can uh, use uh, your microphone with your head headphone and... Yeah, I tried it. 
Uh, or Noor, maybe you can uh, log in with both your phone and your uh, computer and use one as headphone, yeah. one as mic. Yes. Okay. Um, So we have a question from Eva. Do we use the download images from Anaconda for next step of photogrammetry? So actually we gathered all the data. I mean, all the images and all gathered the, all the data. Yeah, but uh, you can download the images uh, you get, got from Anaconda and data scraping and add to your folder in the Google Drive. We can all uh, use all of them for photogrammetry. But if you can't handle that part, it's not necessary. The drives, photos are enough. So you can try it later for yourself. Yeah, we just we wanted to, to just show you how we gather the, all the data from the internet uh, easily, not just uh, doing it manually as uh, Professor Guzan told you. So any others? How many pictures is enough for a photogrammetry? So he'll ask. I think uh, Noor can answer you better because she's professional in the photogrammetry. But uh, as I uh, know uh, about the photogrammetry part, uh, we need maybe more than 50 photos or maybe uh, more than 100 for a really good model? Yeah, I can answer that. Yeah. So, uh, so first of all, we are not in ideal cases. You know, if we were to take the photograph of a small cup, let's say, you know, a, a photograph of 100, you know, or more would be uh, enough. Uh, and Noor will give you a case where you know the ideal case would be how it's gonna be but in this case not it's not about the, only the number about the angles that you have taken the photographs or in this case collected so that's why we will use the videos and the screenshots from the videos so that we can align these things together so it's not about only about the amount but about the quality of the photographs uh, and Yes, exactly. The resolution of the images uh, are very important for photogrammetry. Uh, but we might end up uh, having just a piece of the building. For example, the, the, the main entrance, like the portal that we mentioned, or sometimes some detailed you know, parts. You know, whatever we can get from these photogrammetric images is going to be uh, good enough. Uh, but it's actu actually it's uh, another experimental process for all of us because we are curious what buildings and what photographs and what videos will give you the you know the right models. Uh, so the resolution has to be high, of course, uh, and also you know for capturing the data from the videos the different angles of the same uh, heritage building or heritage object is a very important thing as well. But Noor will cover, cover these. And for Özgün Hoca's part, actually, I mean, uh, there are different ways, there are different codes, yeah. Yeah, I share, <clears throat> shared the original file, uh, file that Professor Özgün sent me, and I will uh, again share in the Discord and mail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as uh, Guzdan, Professor Guzdan told you, you can use uh, some softwares or some codes, uh, different languages. Uh, for example, in my case, I tried uh, the Python and CS code. Uh, and uh, yesterday I told you, uh, I talked about the Octoparse software. We can also use the Octoparse software. It is, it is much easier, but uh, it's hard to customize 
like uh, the Python code. It's uh, in the Python code, uh, code you can easily code and change uh, the loop and uh, the different segments of it. But in Octopars, it's kind of limited. So you can use uh, these kind of softwares or uh, again, use the Python code. Also, I can mention that in the Octopars, uh, you can't really download all of the files in Octopars. Uh, yeah, we have no here. Uh, actually, in the Octopars, you can just get the CSV files. I mean, the uh, links. Uh, if we had a time in the future, I can uh, talk about the Octopars, but in the Octopars software, uh, we can just get the links of the pictures and we have to download them, download all of them by a Google extension that I installed in Google Chrome. Uh, so in the by coding in Python or whatever codes, I mean, the different languages, we easily can get all the data from the internet. So we have, I think, we have the Noor here. Yes. 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 Can you uh, hear? Maybe we can close one of your mics. Okay. Uh, that's perfect. Uh, so, Noor, can you hear us? Uh, you should have a. Air, um, AirPods for oh, one of them. Whatever. Yeah, yeah, headphones and mic with one of other systems. Otherwise, it will echo. Is it okay now? Yeah, it's perfect. Okay. Okay, great. Thank you for waiting. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen again. Okay. Perfect. Can Can you see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so <laughs> I'm gonna continue. Uh, okay. You talked about caravanserai architecture yesterday and today, of course. And I would also like to add a few things from the perspective of an art historian. Um, we know how much the architectural heritage has been damaged and changed over time. So documentation with using um, traditional methods are never enough. So if we have uh, built a 3D model of the building with photogrammetry, it's much easier to rebuild it or restore it. So photogrammetry also provides a great documentation and it's a photographic documentation of the building. Uh, and this session uh, of the workshop, as you can see in the timetable, we are going to build the caravansarai photogrammetry model without taking photos, as we um, talked. So which means our data is collected caravansarai photos that we shared with you yesterday. So about board game, uh, my aim in this workshop is to explain photogrammetry to you, but more importantly, to build a 3D photogrammetry model using collected photos. However, due to COVID-19, which emerged as March 2020 in Turkey, uh, we all have been teaching and working from our home since then. And unfortunately, wars earthquakes, pandemic, and natural disasters can be happen. So it's very important to have a model of an architectural heritage. And in, document, in uh, humanities disciplines like archeology span and history of art and architecture, there are many different methods to make documentation traditionally. But as I said before, there are so new software such as AutoCAD, Rhino, Revit, SketchUp. Um, that kind of software allowed to make not only two-dimensional but also three-dimensional drawing. Now there is a technology that allows us to scan with several different tools and software. Uh, as you 
No, one of them is laser scanner, but it's hard to afford for a student. But uh, in photogrammetry, we can just scan by using photos. And now we are just going to do it by collecting them. <laughs> so what is Metashade? First thing first, it's a digital images that performs photogrammetric process and GIS applications, cultural heritage documentation, and visual effects to be used in the production of three-dimensional data. It's an independent software, by the way. And software multi-camera systems, including RGB, thermal or multispectral images from the cameras of dense point clouds. Um, and DSM DTM permits the processing of spatial information in the form of. And MetaShape can process more than 50,000 photos in a local cluster. And alternatively, the project can be sent to be a cloud to minimize hardware investment and all the processing options are still available. So I wanna talk about the main steps first. Uh, typical tasks for a photogrammetry processing process in Metashape are to build a 3D surface and an auto mosaic. Imagery data processing procedure with Exof Metashape consists of three main steps. One, alignment, so generation mesh or DEM. And the third, auto mosaic. Uh, Metashape looks for feature points in images and maps them to anchor points between images. And um, the program also finds the camera's position for each image and improves the camera calibration parameters. Uh, the result, I think someone is waiting, Safar. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I uh, <laughs> Okay. Um, the port cloud represents the results of the image's alignment and it's not used directly in portrait processing. So however, connection point clause is required for determination of depth, depth maps, and it can be exported for future use in external programs. This is what alignment do. And the uh, second step is the creation of a surface in the form of 3D mesh and to that 5D DM. Uh, the polygon model can be textured and exported in digital representation of the scene. Um, this dance point cloud can be generated by Metashape based on the estimated camera locations and the images themselves. Uh, the generated photogrammetic point cloud can be combined with LiDAR data or authentically divided into several schematic classes following the project tasks. And the uh, main Third step is auto mosaic, uh, which can be georeferenced used in a base layer for various map types and further post process analysis and vectorization. Um, auto mosaic is created by projecting images onto a user selected surface based on EO IO data or DAM or mesh. So uh, we are not gonna take pictures, but I wanna show you how to, because we're gonna um, collect our data based on this. So we already collect them, but if you're gonna, if you want to um, collect in the future, you need to keep that in mind. Um, photographs suitable for 3D model reconstruction in Metashape can be taken by any digital camera. It can be your DSLR or um, your mirrorless camera or your iPhones, actually, uh, as long as specific capturing guidelines are followed. So um, as you can see on the screen, uh, photographs can be overlapped 60% and taken systematically. Uh, think there is a... Um, circle around your object or your building or anything you want and just you need to follow that uh, circle to take photos so it's a little bit uh, hard to take 
Mm, but you need to follow the system. So when we're going to use our photos for photogrammetry, I mean, collected photos, we need to keep that in mind. Um, as you can see, can you see my mouse here? Yeah, yeah, we can see. Okay, okay. this is an object and the blue ones are the photographs. Um, so we can see here, I took the pictures in here, 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 here. Can you see what I'm saying? And this is the uh, mesh version. So it's like there's a sphere in here. That's how we need to take pictures. And yeah, it need to be very systematic and it's actually hard because photogrammetry is not actually photography. It's basically scanning by using a camera. Please keep that in mind. So um, now I want to talk about our main issue. Is it possible to build a photogrammetry model without taking photos? The answer is yes, because now um, I'm going to show you the photos we collect and we're going to talk about them. Um, as a preliminary stage, the first step was deciding the caravansarai to build a 3D photogrammetry model. I listed the conditions to fight the proper caravansarai and the data for caravansarai. The structure and the standing parts of the caravansarai must be suitable for modeling and even the courtyard and surroundings as well. There should not be too much vegetation and moving objects around the caravansarai because um, it prevents the modeling. It was a chance that caravansarais are usually away from the settlement, but of course there was vegetation. And the other thing is it should be decided which part of the caravansarai will be modeled. This is important because more photos are better because it allows us to choose and increase the chance. But, um, it depends on what we got. I mean, if we have a little object, we only need 10 photos or something. But as I said before, meta shape can be processed 50,000 photos as well. So the, it depends on what you have and what you want to build. Um, so uh, the second step is finding the proper photographs. And this is one of the most important steps because of the model based on these photographs. So we can check the YouTube videos, photos and videos taken by tourists, academics, historians, art historians, researchers, and we can check articles, books, historical archives, and web data, like Özgün Hoca showed you. So uh, we can also check the excavation and survey websites and publish databases of caravansarais of the researchers. And YouTube and other video platforms can be very good for us because collecting photographs with taking screenshots just like drone shots. I'm going to show you that. Um, so uh, maybe we can check our collected that data now in here. Nur, please uh, select the digital features. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All the photos are here. Okay. Thank you, Safar. My pleasure. Um, I know you already worked on your data uh, last night, so I think most of you know your caravansara very well. So let's check the caravansara data we had together before photogrammetry. And 
uh, we are collecting this data for like a month or maybe more. And we try to find the proper photos of videos for photogrammetry. And uh, as I said before, it's possible to build a 3D model for uh, with using this kind of data. But please keep that in mind that sometimes only the portal or only a part of the building can be a high resolution model. So it's very important to understand your data. We don't need a model to, of the whole building. So we will do our best and we need to check our data now. So this is Akan. We have so many photos of it. These are the old photos and their new ones. With this, we can build the portal. Can you see there's a lot of photo of it? And we have a Guzden Oja's drone videos. This is also great. Uh, I will show you how to take screenshots and process. So these are gonna work. You can take notes, but um, whatever you want. And this is Alarahan. Yeah, these are the video screenshots I took. You can follow the link in this DF metrics Caravansaray all Excel file. So you can take screenshots by yourself if you want to. But here is the screenshots. Maybe we can open it to look. See, it's like taking a systematic photographs. So that's why videos can be help us to build a 3D model. Okay, so another one, Chardakan. Here is the photos, but we have a, a drone video of this caravan sarai, which is Guzan uh, Ojotsuk. I think it's here, yeah. You can use this videos. And Dokuzun Han. We have drone shots, which is good. And if you have any questions, you can um, ask or you can text me by chat. Okay, in this uh, caravan style, we don't have that much photos, but uh, maybe you can use the um, script that Ozgino just showed you. This will be great, so you can use both of them. Nor they can go, I think they can always go to the matrix and check the videos for mm -hmm. videos. Okay, John. I think we should have the video of each caravansaray as a YouTube or whatever. Later. Yes. So maybe I can show you how to take screenshots and process them on yeah. the metashape right now. Uh, I'm gonna show you the <clears throat> drone shot of Denizi Charda Khan. Okay. 
Okay, this is our video. So now I'm gonna take some screenshots in here. The light and shadow is very important. So my first screenshot will be this one. I'm gonna save it in here, chardoc one. Okay, this would be Chardock 2. This would be Chardock 3. This is really um, easy, actually, as you can see. Okay, Chardock six. I'm doing one by one because I want to I want you to follow. I think we will have 15 photos and it's enough for us. Then we will process this photos. Oops. I need to find the file. With these photos, we will have the plan of the building on 3D, and we will gonna build the auto mosaic. This one is 13, sorry, 14.
And this is the last one, 15. Okay, this is our photos in here. So I'm gonna open Metashape. Um, this is our workspace and you can see the workflow in here. So what we do first is I'm gonna click add photos. And here is my data. You can choose which photos you want. I want all of them right now, all the 15 photos. So I'm gonna click open. And we need to align them. And I means not aligned. So I'm gonna click workflow and align photos. So um, I always align them on high because this is an important step. <clears throat> These default uh, numbers are okay with us. So I'm gonna click okay. So when it's um, processing, um, the most important thing is collecting the videos and photos. The processing is not that hard. So maybe the, uh, we need to work on collecting or more. Okay, this is our tie points. So I don't want this other points in here. So I'm going to click here. You can choose rectangle selection, circle selection, or freeform selection. I want rectangle. So I'm going to delete this other points. We have more. Okay, now we are ready to move on. I'm gonna click on workflow and we need to build advanced cloud now. This can be medium. We want to calculate point colors and that filtering will be melt. So I'm gonna click okay. Uh, you can take notes, but I put the all the uh, workflow in my presentation, so I will send you it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Noor, they have some questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, Vasuda asked, will this still work if the photos are not in sequences? Uh, sorry, I can't understand. Uh, uh, maybe I can ask. Just mm -hmm. like this. I wanted to know. So right now you took the screenshots from the video. So you have them yes. in sequence. But if mm -hmm. we use the data set of the photos, which we download, downloaded as uh, they showed. Mm -hmm. So in that case, they're not in any particular order. It could be one or could be of a gate. Another could be of a column. I mean, will it, will this process still work then? Uh, you need to order them actually. I mean, if you have the portal photos, just order them and then other parts, you know, and the courtyard photos and something. So uh, you need to order them by yourself. Uh, you can make some several chunks. I mean, one chunk can be portal and the other can be courtyard. So maybe you will have only the uh, portals model or all of them. So you can just do it yourself. Okay, thank you. Uh, and the other question is, yeah, I think Professor Guzdan answered it. Uh, that's all, I think. Thank you, Noor. Okay, you're welcome. 
So this is our dance cloud. I'm gonna delete other items here. Then I will move on. Okay, so we are very good at this point because all our photos are aligned and we have tie points. We have a good dance cloud in here. As you can see. So I'm going to move on. We need to build mesh. <clears throat> we wanted to calculate vertex colors. Quality should be, it could be medium at this point we, because we don't have that much time right now, but uh, you can just go with high if you want on your own computer when you're doing this process. So I'm going to click OK. And I choose the video to show you because uh, all the caravan sites have videos of them. Uh, you can uh, you can see them on the drive or at the matrix Excel file. So this is the common data we have. That's why I want to show you. But you can process the other data. So this will be a 3D model, but it's looking like that. No worries, <laughs> we are gonna fix it. And the other step is texture. When we edit a texture, it will be a model. Okay, here is our 3D model. We can see the roof and courtyard and even the details of the plan because our drone shot was a, has a high quality. So I'm just gonna delete the other parts again. Just be careful because you don't want to delete the caravan sarai. This is the main process of building a 3D photogrammetry model. Uh, but I want to show you how to make an orthophoto. Uh, I want my orthophoto from this angle. So I just wanna put it in here and I'm gonna click workflow. There's a build orthophoto. Um, I want planner, but I don't want my projection plane top XY because XY is here. Can you see it? I want it to be current view. So I'm going to click on that and click OK. OK, we need to save our model first. <laughs> so I'm going to save it. I'm going to call it Denizli. 
char dog. Uh, after that, uh, Sefer and Guzan just show you how to name them, the files, and how to download them. So don't worry about the name right now. They will show you. Okay. I'm just going to call it then as a chart again. Click save. Okay. Now we can build an auto mosaic. I want it to be planner. So workflow, build auto mosaic, planner, and current view. I'm going to click OK. And this is our auto mosaic. So I want to export my texture in here because we are going to do this on the MIT part. So if you want <clears throat> to export the file, you need to do this, export. You need to click on file, export, and export texture. I'm going to call it chartdoc again. I want diffuse map and save the alpha channel. So I'm going to click OK. Here it is. This is not a model, as you know, this is a texture. So it needs to be just look like this, don't worry. And here is the main process of the caravan size. Uh, I can take the questions right now. Is there any question? I have a question, Noor, a yes. difficult question so that you can show the markers. If the photos do not align, what do we do? Uh, we can put some markers on it, but um, in video screenshots, that's not working so well. I mean, we can just, can you see it's not that high quality. So if you want a marker, I mean, maybe we need to overlap this and this and this. We can do the thing that right click and add marker. So this is our point one. Can you see all the points? ones in the photos that's why it's not uh, needed to be here but you can use the marker to uh, build a model for not aligned photos but can you see it finds all the point ones in here Uh, any questions? Uh, I I just wondering about uh, that this last step. Why did you add uh, that point one on the um, picture? I did not get it. Uh, okay, Kuzanaja asked me uh, to put uh, points markers on it because she asked that sometimes some of the photos cannot be aligned. If you want 
them to be aligned, we can just put a, a marker on it. So uh, markers can be match each other and build a model. So <clears throat> maybe Gizmanaja can explain it as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, thank you. Yeah, so sometimes the computer doesn't understand uh, that like, because what the computer is trying to do is to, from the photographs, uh, trying to understand the, the, the shape. So it's like the opposite, uh, like the other way around process. From 2D, we are trying to reach 3D. So uh, if the resolution is bad, if the structure, like the photographs are, are not well taken, you know, et cetera, et cetera, you might help the computer to understand that that specific corner, for example, the corner uh, of, you know, like of a building is there in this photograph and the same corner refers to the other, uh, you know, to the same corner in the other photograph. So you are trying to teach the computer that that corner is the same because what computer understands is a pixel. So you are trying to mark that pixel in the photograph one and then teach to the other photograph that like it's the same point. So that's it. You know, if you know, if your uh, images are well taken in ideal cases, or, uh, you know, you might not need that, but the ones who cannot really align, I think it's kind of crucial to use the marker. And uh, Noor, maybe if we have time at the end, we can try this marker with some high quality photos that we have in the drive. For yeah, sure, but, but well, so high quality have... photos like this uh, can be found their own markers, as you can see in here. But yes, Tarvin, we can try it. Okay, thank you. But maybe uh, we can give you time, 30 minutes or something to uh, work on your data and try to build a model. Then we can meet again and look your uh, models and export them. Yeah. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah yes. sure. But, Suda has a question. Yeah, yeah. before yeah. that, there are some yes. questions. Uh, Gong also asked questions. Uh, are there any difference between this kind of modeling or it is a step by step order and the ortho mosaic is the final one that we want? Yes, you. the ortho mosaic is the final step actually you cannot build an auto mosaic without doing the others so uh, we want the auto mosaic so you know if you're gonna uh, uh, draw the plan or the map you can use it that's why i showed you that but yes auto mosaic is the final one okay great thank you and wasuda asked Maybe I missed, but how does MetaShape understand the scale or dimension from the image? Or do we have to scale the model at, in the in, end of our cell? Uh, yes, uh, actually, MetaShape cannot understand the scale uh, from the images, but you can, uh, <clears throat> if you're using, <clears throat> using a, a um, drawn like a GPS on it. Yeah, it can understand it, but uh, the data we collected from the internet, it's not enough to understand the scale. Okay. But if you know the, uh, um, the dimension of the portal, you can just uh, do it yourself, yes. But for the stage, no worries, you know, for the scale. Yeah, this is not important for us about scale. We just want to build a model, just not like just on the <clears throat> building, like portal or courtyards, you know, no worries about it. Okay, great. So anything to add, Professor Guzan? No, I actually, uh, yeah, that's a good one, Yus uh, Yusra. 
for 360 images while you are importing, uh, you just like choose the option of spherical. Uh, can you like, uh, Noor, can you just like try to import the 360 images? Then I show you very quick. Uh, which ones? To, to the meta side? Try to, yeah, try to import one image. Oh, only okay. one, add, add yes, one image. Yeah. Uh, I need to download the images in here. So, uh, so Maybe. For everyone, every, sing, every single model has a different, you know, challenge. That's, you know, for, for caravansarize. Uh, so, yes, in this one. Yeah. It's kind of trial and error at this stage. I think she's trying Which to... Which one has 3D photographs? 360, uh, uh, INIF. And they're in INIF. INIF, yeah. INIF. Uh, Antalya, no, not the other one. The shortcut has it. Oh, okay. Uh, I need to download the images first so I can process them. Yeah. <laughs> Here is Gizdan again. While I'm you are in to... Ultra, uh, you just click the photograph that's like the image property as spherical. That's very straightforward. So it will be able to read it uh, clearly even though it's 360, right? Yeah, okay. Yes, we tried. I mean, they're a bit distorted. Yes, that's not the ideal case. That's why we advise you to work in chunks, right? Mm -hmm. One chunk can work, the other chunk cannot so uh, so now so now let's see but every single caravan sarai is gonna have another challenge just to name the folders with your caravan sarai name so far okay that's like like as simple as it, as it is and you know after we process we have some photographs or some models we are gonna try to upload to mit system but at the end we definitely want the 3d models if we can Okay, 18 seconds left. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yeah, that's okay. And meanwhile, if anyone has any question, you can ask. You should, frankly speaking, the 360 photographs really didn't happen to be as good as we thought. I mean, it was quite an experimental process, but if you have no other options, you know, that's unfortunately depending on the data that you have. The best is uh, very surprisingly the videos that that's totally the opposite of what they recommend. Uh, the videos and the, like if you you can use any ready software to have more regular uh, you know sequences of these images uh, from the videos. Sometimes surprisingly unordered photographs can be aligned. Very yes. surprised that you know uh, you might have. Yeah, ignore my photograph. Yeah, just like yeah. So try to open it. We have 26 photos now. So I'm going to try to please, align them. Yeah, could you, no, 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 like do not go there. Could you please go to add photo, like delete this chunk? Oh, okay. Yeah, so now uh, workflow, add photo. Sorry? In workflow, mm -hmm. photo here. Then choose like three of them, like 17, 18, 19. Oops. Oh. These three? 
Yeah, let's see, like try to align them. No, there was another option. Let me check mine. Okay, I'll, I'll okay. let you know. There is a click while you are editing. It might be in the professional version where you just like, you do not uh, use 360 as plain, but rather you click and you say that it's a spherical. I let me check, okay, in my software, then I will okay, let you. I try to ignore 360 so far, okay? Okay. Okay, okay. shall we meet at uh, half an hour? Means 10.30 for me. Okay. 40 minutes later. Yeah. 40 minutes later, Tom. Okay. 40 minutes later, okay. Yeah. I so, mean, if you finish earlier, you will, you know, let us know. Okay, and if you have questions. Okay, thank you. See you. Bye. Bye.
Okay. So, yeah, we have sardine. I think at this time we can have a quick question and answers, quick session with Noor and Professor Yuzdan, and then move to the MIT system, how to upload the 3D models, the MIT system. So uh, do you have any question? Actually, some uh, participants asked some questions and uh, Professor Guzan answered them. So Noor is coming. Yeah, we have you, Noor. Okay. Uh, some of you actually uploaded your PNG. Uh, Mutiara has another question that I missed actually. Can we combine meshes from multiple sequence photos? Yes. Uh, so we have two options for that. One option is to uh, combine them in photo scan. I keep calling it photo scan, it's meta shape. Uh, the, the software used to be called like photo scan. Uh, so you can use it any soft like photogrammetric software to combine them or MIT system as it's based on crowdsourcing data is able to combine the models as well. So either of it, but like at this point, I think it's better that you just work on your photo scan models, these photogrammetric models and try to best get best out of it. You know, you remember the Mosul project in my first presentation where we've been trying to recover some information from the internet. So either, you know, uh, we are not in ideal cases where we can go to these archeological sites and collect information. So we are trying to collect uh, information from the internet as much as we can, okay? So we, we might have a few caravanserized that you might not end up having a photo scan model, uh, but try our best, you know, try to process different sections, different settings, you know, try to have more sequential photographs. Usually more photographs are better, uh, more resolution is better. So you have time, it's usually click, click and wait. So we are looking forward to have your results anyway for tomorrow. Uh, you wanna show the MIT systems apart? Okay, so for this stage, you can use, login your own email and explore the MIT system, but the final results for tomorrow uh, is gonna be uploaded through the same email that we will provide you. So, okay, thank you, Professor Gusev. So uh, now me and Sarvin will share and show you the MIT system that you wanna yes. upload our uh, models here. So first of all, uh, I wanna show you how to create a one, which is so uh, really easy for you, but we want to start from first, from sketch. So uh, we, uh, when you are uh, entering, actually I shared the link in the chat, the chat box, and you are entering the uh, MIT Design Heritage Platform, you will see this page. Uh, we have uh, different selected projects. You can check all of them. They have some uh, 3D models uh, with the, uh, I mean, the maps and different objects in it. They are really, really interesting that they worked at MIT's uh, class, different classes. So from here, uh, you have to log in. If you either have any account or not, I'm sure you don't have any account. So uh, you have to press, don't have an account, sign up for uh, here, sign up free, uh, free here. So you have to enter your name and your email and any password you want and press the sign up. After that, you will get an email to activate your account. 
Uh, and also, I just shared the user guide with you. Yeah, yeah. Thank the you. User guide. You can find everything here. And we will tell you uh, how to upload it. Also, if you uh, didn't get anything from our actual instructions, you can get any information from the DHP uh, user guide. So uh, I have an account, so I will sign in here. <clears throat> uh, we have some models. So if you have any model, you have to get, for example, I will uh, check the Chardoc uh, texture and Chardoc object. Uh, you have to have one JPEG or JPG file and one OBG. Uh, actually, the Chardacons model that uh, Noor worked 30, 40 minutes ago, we will upload it to this system. So, uh, after, uh, maybe about the um, extension. Uh, yeah, yeah. I will. I will tell uh, tell it uh, in the upload part. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You need to just press the upload, and here, upload new model or new image model for the modeling. We will start from here. But images, if you want any images beside your mother or under your model for any mapping or any systems, actually we have the systems of game board. Uh, after uploading the model we uh, uploaded the, our images uh, but for now we just start to upload new models model file object which is 20 meg 20 megabytes which is here chart.com 4.3 megabytes it's okay for now And here the texture file, which is JPG, and maximum file is 10 megabytes. So uh, for here, Chardak texture, actually the file was a JPEG, and I renamed it to JPG, okay? And if you have the file, which is another, uh, with another extensions or formats, you can easily, uh, convert to JPG or just rename it as I did here. Just rename it to JPG format. Actually, in the Windows, uh, maybe you don't see the extensions. You have to show the extensions from the properties. If you can't do it, you can just uh, use the convert to JPG. Sarvin, do you want to add something? Yeah, I just want to say that uh, you may not uh, pay attention to this, but uh, just the system just accepts this version, this extension. So you yeah. may face uh, some uh, errors that you don't know why it is. Uh, one of the reasons is this one. So um, you should pay attention to it. Yeah, exactly. And I put it in the... Discord. Okay. So I'll upload the texture, which is, I think, 1.2 megabytes. So, for uh, actually, this system is not the final version of the MDH system. So, it is the beta version of the system. So, uh, we will have the MTL. We could uh, upload MTL in the future. We are work, uh, the, uh, the MIT's group are working on this platform. So for here, actually with the start, we have to uh, write the title and the creator we have to write. For example, title char doc hans model test. Uh, also for here, pay attention to not to use any other characters yeah. than English ones. Exactly, I want to say that. Uh, and for creator, maybe we can write 
separate my name. You can add some info, for example, digital caravan Sarai, and references and this kind of things. And uh, actually, before I go to thumbnail, I have to say this model right now is not uh, is not in the right. Uh, actually, yeah. what? Yeah, direction. Yeah, yeah, exactly. In, in, in not right direction. We have to change and rotate it so easily. We can move it up a little, and you can use the convert Z up model to Y up. You can use it to make it easier. And now we can rotate it a little. Or you can, yeah, that's almost done. It's just a test. And you can use uh, this kind of, I, uh, I mean, the UI part and check them here. So we use the rotate, we use the move, we can uh, use all of the buttons from here. And here we will use just rotate and move. So for here uh, on thumbnail, uh, it's better to just capture here's image. If you just click on capture, it will, the system will automatically capture the preview of the model to here, or uh, either you can just select some images for chart accounts to be thumbnail of your project. And here we will, uh, for here, you can change the UI part, hide UI to see your model easily. And after that, we can upload it. Maybe it takes a little time because I'm streaming, uploading, and watching our YouTube channel. So yeah, finished. Everything is okay for now, for just now. Uh, you can also change some parts for low res, high res. You can check them. Uh, actually, we will talk about them uh, at the end of the, I mean, the fifth session. But you can check them from the DHP user guide. So uh, it's uh, we uploaded, just uploaded our uh, model from the assets part. I mean, just upload from here or upload from here, two buttons. So right now we have that a model, as you see, chart.com's model test in our assets. We uh, uploaded before some assets. So we, you have just, you will have just one asset here. And you have to, to uh, actually see uh, as a project, you have to open a project, I mean, create a project. You will go to my project part, here, create a new project. So project name, maybe uh, digital first mm, test. Project info, maybe my name. Okay, editor, you can add some different editors here to access and work together. Um, some references or another categories. We will talk about them in the next sessions, geolocated, make it public or not. You have to just create it. Okay, and for here, this is your new project. It's empty right now. You have to add the assets of the project. We uh, actually upload one asset 
we have to project, uh, click on project assets, and you see here, no assets, add model. You will see the models that you uploaded before to the system. We uploaded this, so we will confirm. And now in, in this project, we have one model. You will see the active models here. Sabrina, want to add something? Yeah, sure. Uh, actually, for now, we just, uh, as we said, um, just teach you to add your models and we will ask you to just try um, to uh, know that if you can upload your model, because the process here is uh, very easy. You just upload your model, but the uh, problems you may face uh, will be related to the the model you exported from the MetaShape uh, because the system has some uh, limitations and in the guideline uh, you will see them too. Uh, but um, addition, in addition to the file size, which is 10 megabytes, uh, your um, model should have a um, maximum uh, 50,000 uh, um, faces, face counts. Exactly. Can she here, uh, see here? And uh, also, um, we mentioned that it doesn't uh, support multiple sex, uh, textures yet. And uh, additionally, um, you can see that uh, the um, resolution of the texture should be maximum 2K or 4K. You can't upload 8K. So uh, maybe while uploading your model, you will face some um, such these problems. So you will uh, need to go and re-export uh, your model with um, new maybe uh, settings. So we just want you to test this with your own account. Then at the end, uh, today we will mail you a, a new email that we will share uh, the password with all of you to just uh, all of you upload your models from the one same um, email uh, that we can gather all together. And uh, as we said at the fifth uh, session, we will uh, mention that what we will do with these models that we here uploaded, because right now it's just as a viewer, as you see, but we will gather all them together to use the systems AR function. Yeah. So, mm, yeah. Uh, because of that, we will continue the rest of the uh, instructions at the last session. And also about the, mm, because, uh, you know, in the mm, culture projects, the documentation is very important. So we will share you uh, a format uh, today in the mm, email that how name your uh, models how name your uh, projects and how name the main um, models that you export and uh, you upload to the drive to have a fixed uh, format uh, for naming uh, that we in that way we won't lose anything yeah exactly and uh, as Sarin told you you just, for now, you just uh, go to this website and create your account with your um, Gmail or any mails, activate your account and uh, try to uh, upload your models, uh, test them and uh, try to figure out the situation in this platform. And after that, uh, we will uh, give you a shared account to upload the uh, upload your models one by one due to the sorted names. So, Professor Guzan. Okay, in our last eight minutes. So, first of all, uh, for today, just explore, okay, and wait for our email. That's it. And another thing about the, uh, the photo scan, try to make your models as meaningful as possible by deleting unnecessary environmental things because uh, try to concentrate on the building only 
sometimes some videos, especially the dr drone videos, it takes a lot of photographs or videos from the surrounding that is not necessary for our case. Just, uh, you know, readjust your uh, boundary box in PhotoScan. Uh, try to have the optimal resolution for your model. And uh, now you can use your own email to do as many trials as you can. Uh, but for the final, we will just share a, an email with you. Okay. So MIT system is under process still. Uh, we are working on some adjustments. Uh, so the limit is that uh, like the lower, you know, face count is uh, better. But also uh, we can use only one texture means one single texture that's by photo scan or any other photogrammetric images or models are ideal in this case, okay? But you can mess up with anything. We can like, don't, not worries, you know, uh, with your own accounts. You will keep your things. You can play with it. You can adjust. If you have further questions, we will have a full session on MIT AR systems on Friday, okay? Just okay. one last word for tomorrow. Uh, we will start doing the textures. Yeah, uh, I will share the models. Yeah, yeah. go yeah. ahead. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for tomorrow, we will uh, share the models and uh, we will talk about the PBR materials, procedural materials, 3D model uh, details uh, with Warlock, Yuk Gel, uh, and UV mapping and texturing. And uh, at the end of the session uh, for the homework, we will upload our models to pre-3D.in uh, platform. And uh, you can reach all the timeline, I mean, the timeline and workshops program from the workshops uh, yeah. Google Drive, yeah. And also you can see, you can check our uh, contact part, email, if you have any questions from Noor or Professor Yuzdan or Professor Özgün or us for any problems we are facing, we will uh, answer you as soon as possible. Uh, also, uh, we will ask you to please uh, be ready with your models tomorrow because yeah. Uh, if your models uh, were not ready, you couldn't continue with Barlock because uh, you will work on them. Yeah, exactly. So, any questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. Mudra. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, so this is a small one, but uh, I already built the depth clouds, but the file name, the image names are not going, going from the screen, uh, the blue markers. So how do I remove those? Uh, question to Noor. Can you share the screen, Mudra? Sure, sure. So these, these markers, the screenshot markers that you see here, how do I remove uh, these? Uh, there is an option. You go to the camera, go to the camera on the right-hand side. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, and the other question was that, uh, so there are a few videos, few drone videos for Injiran, but uh, most of them, them are from the top view. So if I, and I have images from the side views and the front facade. So uh, is there a way that I can create different chunks to make the whole building or would one chunk make only one kind of photogrammetry? Uh, okay, so you can, I, I think you can just add them in the same chunk and try to understand whether the computer can align them or, or not. Then if it works, it works, you know, uh, then you can, like, if it doesn't work, then you can add, start using some markers to teach okay. them. But if there are only images from the top and from 
let's say an elevation, most probably the computer will not understand that, okay? okay? So it's usually at explore, click and wait process. So try to play with some settings. Uh, you know, just Noor just showed you the basics actually. Mm. Uh, yes. But if you, if you want, we can provide some tutorials. Uh, there are really not like one formula for that. Okay, so try to add, you know, as many photographs as you can, like try to add them in sequence. It's still, if it doesn't work, you know, try to, uh, you know, process them in different options. Uh, we kind of expect that not all caravansarais will have the model. I mean, we know that, okay? okay? But if you can have one representational 3D model of a part of a caravansarai, that's good enough for us because we are, let's say in an emergency modeling case, you know, where we don't have access to the site, you know, where we cannot really have the ideological drone captures, you know, that's, we know that that's, that's the challenge that we are working on. And also don't forget to take the YouTube links on Excel. Maybe you can find another video from there. Yeah, exactly. So we have, oh, okay. So that's all I think. Yeah. Okay. Cool for thank you, everyone. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Gustan, Noor, Sarvin, uh, and Professor Özgün. Uh, so we will see you tomorrow at the same time. Uh, and uh, for uh, today, uh, we will uh, upload the video to the YouTube as soon as possible. We export and process the video. And uh, we have all the links in the Discord and in the chat box, we put the links. But in Discord, we have all the links. And we will email you again for tomorrow's um, um, Zoom link. And that's all. Thank you for participating to this workshop and see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.